Um, I, I ahead of this interview, I, I rewatched your 1995 interview with Tupac Shakur. Um, mm. It was released. Uh, I mean, it came out after he was released from prison on bail. And I remember at the time it being a huge deal. But also rewatching it, I noticed the energy between you and him was really interesting and alive. And I, I was wondering how aware did he seem to you of just his charisma and, and this aura. <laughs> that I, I think people were both fascinated and even repelled by that charisma and just his overall, against just aura. Yeah, well, I was definitely aware of it at the time because I felt like he was flirting through the interview. He was. <laughs> um, but I wasn't used to that. So, I, I mean, even Bill Clinton didn't flirt with me. So I thought that, that was sort of unnerving. And then I realized, well, you know, if he, if I had just gotten out on bail from, um, the, from charges of sexually assaulting a woman, and now I'm sitting down with a woman for an interview, I might be extra special nice. So I don't think he had a crush on me. I think he was just trying to be on his best behavior because he was dealing, he wanted to show that he could be nice to women because the charges imply otherwise. Um, but I do feel like we kind of clicked at the same time. I mean, I, I had no, I had no expectation of that whatsoever. I didn't listen to hip hop. I didn't listen to rap. I knew of him. I certainly have listened to all of that for work, but it was not my go-to, um, artist to put on my CD player, which is what a machine that used to play music. <laughs> spinning, spinning shiny time. discs. Uh, I mean, it's... Um, so when people, people say that to me, all they, I get a lot of reaction now to that interview, and that was a very long time ago. Um, but I think that he was so smart and had so much to say in his lyrics um, and actually has quite a few songs that present women in a very strong, powerful way because I think his mother, um, despite her uh, drug addictions from time to time, I think she was a very positive, powerful force. And he was full of ambition. So I think that he really thrived around other people who were young and ambitious, too. Um, and you mentioned that hip-hop wasn't your go-to music at the time. And it was, I think, an interesting time for a woman, you know, particularly even a, a white woman, to be doing that interview, given the recent uh, sexual uh, assault conviction and just a time before hip hop was mainstreamed in the way mainstream is defined for rap, which basically means white people listen to it. Were, <laughs> were, were you conscious at the time of, I guess, perceived politics or other politics or otherwise politics of doing a sit down with Tupac? I felt like it was a good decision because he saw me as sort of the smart girl on MTV. Mm -hmm. I think that he, um, I think that putting him with a woman was deliberate on MTV's part, and I also think that they didn't want a fan sitting down with him. So even though um, I didn't know much about his music, I mean, I certainly knew about his music by the time I did the interview, but I did it for work. I mean, just like I researched Bosnia before I went over there, you go back into you know, World War I and see who was shot to kick off you know, the problems in Yugoslavia, you remind yourself, even though you learned that in history, you go back and you listen to it much more intensely. So I did all that with Tupac, and I also had copies of his new record. Although, you know, the idea of sitting there in the studio with him and listening to it on camera, I couldn't think of anything more uh, undesirable. It's like, yeah, that's what am I going to do Why I'm listening to this music, you know, bop my head up and down, snap my fingers, <laughs> like pull out a dance move. Like it was so awkward. <laughs> Plus, everyone around us was smoking tons of pot and they all had guns on them. So I was not, not comfortable at all, but I had to pretend like, yep, no big deal. Let's see if I can squeeze in a few more questions. Right. But it's an interesting thing to be around somebody who is personally charming and also you know, having, you know, accused of, I guess, was he convicted? He was convicted, convicted of well, sexual assault. bad things. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, totally bad things. Yeah. I mean, he probably wouldn't be dead if he didn't have his finger in so many bad things. So, you know, that he, but he's had crime and, you know, uh, difficult hurdles to get over since he was born. Right. 
um, that is just that was just his fate in life. I I wished that he. I mean, he had so much to offer. It would have been so wonderful if he had. Ex- you know, extrapolated himself from that culture and gotten out of this East-West rivalry thing and separated himself from Suge Knight. I mean, there were a thousand ways that he could have changed the course of his life, but the culture did not encourage that, and certainly the music industry didn't. Um, you know, I, I mean, we were basically patted down and not strip-searched, but just as almost very close to it going into it was bad boy records right uh I, suge knight suge, owned uh, death row death LA. row i i could google it right i, now. I think it's whatever record company death it row. Was. i mean everyone was armed to the teeth and they wanted to make sure that we were not going to start any trouble in there right. so i mean they i the the closest situation i had to that in terms of being inspected and all my equipment and and what i was carrying in my purse and whatever was interviewing arafat so, you know, it was like, whoa, but this guy isn't a world leader, and he's not trying to um, find peace in Israel, and he's not associated with a terrorist organization. And so, I don't know. I, I think that um, the world would have been better off, and music industry would have been better off if Tupac had stuck around, but it wasn't to be the case.